Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and we're excited to kick off the 2024 year with you guys. You see, we have a brand new series designed to help you navigate through the world of personal finance with confidence. We got to do everything with confidence. Today we'll be answering some of the most common financial questions people face every day. From saving money on a tight budget to starting your investment journey with little funds, we've got you covered with practical tips and insightful advice. Let's dive in and take control of our financial future together, folks. And as you can see here today, we have a Google slide and we're going to go over some powerful points. Your guide to managing money with confidence. Okay, now first slide, how to save money on a tight budget. And the first one is what everybody should be focused on, your expenses. So to track your expenses, and, and this, this right here might be for some, you know, a little bit of more advanced people who, who work with technology, different devices, they got apps on their phone, or they might uh, have learned how to do Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. QuickBooks, uh, Google Google spreadsheets, you know what I'm saying? And know how to monitor, monitor where all the money goes. That's the point. So, you know, if you just want to go through it a simple way, you need to know where your money is going. You know what I'm saying? Who you paying, what you're doing, you know, with your money at the end of the cycle of the money. We're, we need to focus on a monthly basis. You see what I'm saying? So just keep that in the back of mind. And number two is to cut unnecessary costs. Cancel subscriptions you don't use and find cheaper alternatives for essentials. You know what I'm saying? Like most majority of this stuff is free out here until you get to a level of where you got a surplus of cash and then you can just get certain subscriptions. Basically all the subscriptions you need is subscriptions that's empowering you to, you know, save money better or to make money things like that like all those netflix subscriptions this this stuff that you really just watching it you really don't even need that in your budget you know what i'm saying you can do away with that so you need to be focused more on trying to uh you know save money and cut costs and just keep building money up every single year your your bank account your treasury should be adding up excuse me yearly on a yearly basis Number three, cook at home. Save money by preparing meals instead of eating out. And that's, and you know, since inflation, it, man, a lot of this stuff costs a lot of money to eat just a single meal, especially if you got a, you know, flock of kids with you, you know, two or three kids, four or five kids, man, that's a lot. So the best thing is to, you know, shop on a bi weekly basis, you know, so your food and stuff can stay fresh, you know, get the essentials. You know, spices, canned goods, veg, you know, stuff that you can. But on the most part, you want to you wanna shop on a bi-weekly basis. So that way you prepare fresh meals. Sometimes you don't even got to prepare meals for a couple of days out of the week. Y'all can just kind of eat, you know, knickknacks and just, you know, kids can kind of choose what they want. But you're not going out breaking the bank on fast food. You know, shop smart, use coupons, buy in bulk. Some people say they go to Sam's, buy certain things in bulk where... The next three months or three or four months, you don't have to buy really nothing. You can just kind of save those checks and the extra money, the surplus. You can just tuck that away into a savings account or mainly to your brokerage account where you're just going to kind of hold that money at and, you know, grow it or just keep it there where you won't spend it. Always looks for sales. You don't got to necessarily buy cheap goods or whatever, but in those places that got high-end goods and stuff, find the sales, find the clearance racks. So that way, you you know, you can be shopping in the same places at luxury brands, but you're getting it for a lower price. You see what I'm saying? If you still want to have a drip or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Always treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. It's say Slide number three. Effective ways to manage and pay off debt. I think this is slide number two. We on slide number two. Sorry about that, folks. Effective ways to manage and pay off debt. 
prioritize high interest debt pay off debts with the highest interest rates first to save on interest so a lot of people they really too much don't know about interest rates but the interest rate is the interest you pay for holding the amount of debt with whoever your lender is credit cards you know you got a pretty high debt but if you can, if you can manage it then you know credit cards ain't a bad thing it's number two consolidate debts consider a debt con co consolidation loan to combine multiple debts into one and this is just if you got been having debt you know how to manage debt and you got you got like a bunch of credit cards of different debts you can kind of do but really you know sometimes that is not really necessary but you know like they said always uh reach out to your financial advisor discuss stuff with your financial advisor you know whoop -de -whoop or whatever but that one is kind of so more you can really just kind of manage your debt pay off certain debts jump by jump and then you know once you pay off a few because you don't have to consolidate things that's you can just pay off in a couple of weeks or a month and that'll just fall off and it'll be one less debt you got to worry about and then you know what i'm saying so number three negotiate with creditors reach out to know to negotiate lower interest rates of payment plans and it's kind of hard just depending on what type of rates you got you know what i'm saying with but you can negotiate payment plans when you want to pay this bill or pay something on this bill due to the way your checks fall because you always want your money your bills and stuff to kind of line up with if you receiving a check every two weeks you know what i'm saying so with that first check you can pay off everything that needs to be paid off right there with that check that you know if you got a bill that's out to the next to the second check that really don't matter but if any anywhere you're gonna get paid for the next two weeks and those bills are due within that cycle and you know those gonna, bills are gonna be due before you get your next check you won't you must pay those bills right there as soon as you get your paycheck because that way you get it out the way you can you know let everything clear let all the payments come out your bank if you you know paying online banking and you know debt is you know bills are coming out of your bank account and then you just let everything clear and then you see how much you have left to disperse between different accounts you know something you're gonna leave in to get you over to the next paycheck you know things like that and be careful use the snowball method it says pay off the smallest debts first to build momentum you see what i'm saying then you can target but for the most part you really don't want to get yourself in debt really at all just to be honest with you unless you know how to manage money very efficiently okay and we're on slide three how to start investing with little money number one start with a budget allocate a portion of your income from investments even if it's a small portion and that is the best thing that you can do because that's the small portions of money small medium large sums of money that you're allocating towards your investments you know that money is what you're saving and is growing and then it's just compounding you know what i mean and it's and it's allowing you to build up a nest egg you know and as you grow you can build up several nest eggs and then you can be financial wealthy and you can have financial freedom and you can be able to move and think in a in a widely different type of level of thinking due to you're not being bogged down as my buddy chris say by the financial plan you know by the uh you know your work your 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 financial plantation basically where you slaving every day instead of you know spending all your money on a you know on a slave shit really but for the most part we all gotta work and even with a nine to five job you can build wealth and come substantially rich you know and then the next one is use robo advisors which this really don't pretend like i said if you're more of an advanced trader you can be your own advisor you know your manager your ceo of your own investment portfolio mainly if you just buy top quality companies and just hold them and just invest in them you know as they go down and then you just keep putting money into your account until when they make big drops mm -hmm. and then you can just load the boat on some of them and just kind of hold those things forever and just watch your money grow and compound over time 
and then number three says invest in ETFs or index funds. These are low cost options that diversify your investment and beware of these risky assets. Risky assets mainly on our channel what we call risky assets is things that are not protected by the FDIC or SPIC, you know, where your money is protected and secure if anything gets lost or hacked, you know. Not saying that this stuff is gonna happen, but you never know. Times are we in we in strange times nowadays. And number four, educate yourself. Learn the basics of investing through online courses or books. Choose wisely when buying courses. Like I said, some of this stuff is just freely advice if you just take the time out. But never, like I said, cheat yourself. You gotta treat yourself. Sometimes you might have to pay, you know, a couple hundred dollars or a few, you know, a few dollars for some courses or some, you know, to learn so some higher events brains that write books and stuff like that you see what i'm saying so don't ever be too cheap to invest in yourself when it comes to spending money on courses knowledge and all that stuff because it's just a one-time payment and once you learn it you know how to fish now so that way you can just keep continuing to make money over time in our next slide we got slide four and it's called creating and sticking to a budget. We all really need to learn how to budget. Some some people can budget in their head because they already know how much money they're going to get for these two weeks. They already know which bills they got to pay with this check. And they already know how much money that they're going to have left to allocate it, where it's going to go. Basically, you know. Before your check, your direct deposit even hits your bank. If you are you doing is keeping up, you know how many hours you make and you know how much you get paid. And so you already can forecast on things that you have to do. And, and people need to be staying on point with this. Most of these times, people don't even understand and be knowing half this. So they don't, they really don't, not even paying attention. They don't care. So they're not taking, taking this stuff serious when they need to be taking this stuff serious. You know, people be... You know, wanting to be the, in them status codes, them titles, and, you know, being, the, you know, witty and everything like that. But, you know, and this, I'm talking to my my ladies, you see what I'm saying? You know, my daughters, my, my, my female ladies, companions, all these ladies need to pay close attention to your finances and know how to budget. You know, it's, it's understandable. You know, people be watching entertainers and celebrities and they talk about just spending it all. They have other people to budget for them as well, and they and they making a surplus of money, so they can spend recklessly. But to people who's barely getting by, who barely get you know getting small amount of checks, working nine to five, just start now sometime, and then sometime you got to start over, mm -hmm. different stuff like that. But for the most part, if you just kind of work in a nine to five job, you want to know where your money is going. You need to budget. Even if you can just get techy and savvy with it, apps like Mint or YNAB can help you track your spending and stick to your budget. We're not sponsored by any of these, but it's just helpful ways that you can manage and, you know, understand a budget. Automated savings. Set up an automatic transfer to your savings account. Sometimes this can be good if you're going to stay on top of it and you know where your money is going and you ain't using you ain't where well, you using this money and you forget that you did something with this money and you got to automatically come out and then you don't got it in there. You don't need to be setting up automatic trading. Only way, you, I mean, automatic transfers. If you got automatic transfers, that means you got money in these accounts that you're not touching. You discipline. You know what you're doing. You didn't, as soon as your check come, you you pay your bills on, on, on time. If you can pay online, like certain credit cards, mostly basically you can get on there, log into your account, pay your bill. All accounts like that, as soon as them bills supposed to be due and that check come, let's say for instance you get paid on the 30th and you and you got a bill that's due on the 5th of next month and you know you're not going to get paid before you get a life. So you're going to pay that bill that's due on the 5th as soon as you get paid. So that way you got it paid. You ain't worried about no more bills coming into your next check, that cycle. And then you just going to be, you know, waiting for everything to clear to come out your bank account and then see what you got left over. But for the, for the most part, you really are that automatic withdrawing. Like, you don't want to get off until you want to you want to make sure you pay your bills yourself. Sometimes if, if you got automatic car payments coming out, automatic this coming out, you don't want that. You just want to know when you got to pay this bill and when that check going to come 
so you can pay that bill. All that automatic setting up, you know, it's good, but sometimes you can't really, you know, manage your money or, or do certain things if, if it automatically come out because sometimes you can work around the calendars. I mean, you know, finesse and certain things, you can push certain things back in this. And so sometimes you can save a little bit more money. You can invest more, you know what I'm saying? But if it's automatically coming out, then you really ain't got no no wiggle, no room to wiggle. Because you want to be savvy with paying bills and stuff like that. So you can kind of be saving more money working around the calendar. Like sometimes, sometimes you get paid three times in a month. All that like that, you need to be forecasting so that way you can save thousands you know, each month, if you know what I'm saying, because you people can save thousands of dollars, but they blow most of it. They don't understand and be looking for the opportunities within the calendars, within these checks, how they fall, and stuff like that. So basically, you sleep and you ain't just you ain't you ain't you ain't savvy with what you're doing. You ain't efficient. You ain't stand on top of your game. Basically, even if it's just a nine to five, all this stuff matters. Sticking to a budget. So review and adjust. Regularly review your budget and make adjustment needs as needed. You know what I'm saying? So that was five slides. And then we got five more slides that go with these five slides. But we want you to work on the first five. And then we shall move forward with the next five slides. And, and that's basically what we're going to close this out with. And we thank you guys for watching. And joining us today, we hope you found these tips and solutions helpful as you work towards achieving your financial goals. So remember, managing your finances doesn't have to be overwhelming. With the right knowledge and tools, you can make informed decisions and build secure financial wealth for your future. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more educational and entertaining videos and content. Stay tuned for our up and coming videos and let's make 2024 our best financial year yet so next time stay focused keep your head up and like the motto is always look to your highest potential and you can't do that by only worshiping god so keep god first peace